this is Genesis. I'm coming to you about a random video of me coding. This is another coding session here. Today I wanted to mess around with some machine learning or as I'm probably going to call it uh, just AI learning because it's going to be a dumbed down Armor 3 version of it. It's not going to be as fancy. This is just a little project I want to do. The goal is going to be simple. So what are we trying to do today? What does all this mean? Well, what I'm trying to do and let me go ahead and make myself uh, invincible here and make sure that no AI shoots me because that would upset me and make everything oh man did I spell that wrong? ah man I have been I've not this has come in a long time alright set captive true Okay, there we go. So the goal is, well, the goal is the AI. I want an AI to get to this trophy. Now, it doesn't sound like too hard of a task, right? You can go ahead and, uh, you know, grab an AI, and you know, you can just, you can just tell them to move up here, right? Let me get out of the way here for right now. Yeah, I'll move up there. That's cool and all, uh, but what I want to do is have the AI learn a better path to get to this object here. Uh, this is not something we're going to complete. I'm aiming to do this around, we we'll do th this in 30 minute increments. Uh, but, you know, I'm going to have the goal, like maybe, we'll put it uh, back here or something. And I'm going to have AI right here. Looking this way. So what I want to do is have the AI after several trials, and probably many, many more than we'll have in this video, I might let it run and then show you the result. Ready. I want the AI to be smart enough, and it's just going to be a survivor, no weapons. Wait. I want him to be smart enough, when I tell him, I give him a goal, I want you to go here. I want him to be smart enough to n not do what he's about to do. Is he, is he going to do it just fine? He might have to pick a different area. But he might just go all around just by himself. The goal is I want them to be able to path around and use certain waypoints or knowledge of an area to avoid uh, potentially dangerous scenarios. Uh, what I'm going to be doing here is not going to be compatible for a normal game because it's going to be very niche in its use for just this scenario. You can see he's kind of going through the front. He kind of took the long way around for some reason, probably because I put him right here. Um, and these AI oh, I have spotted him and they won't go ahead and take him out. Or they can't aim. So he just got scared and is running away. Well, good for him. Which is fine. But what I want to be able to do is I'm pop in another AI, and I'm going to give this AI the same knowledge as the, other, the previous AI had. And when I tell them to move up here, I want them to go, oh, and I'm not going to go up there because there's some dangerous shit up there. Right? Just like that. So I want them to avoid that at all costs. So I guess let's begin. Then first, I need to probably set a better goal for the AI to be able to reach. Uh, this area is kind of difficult for the pathing anyway. But I'm thinking right here should be doable because uh, there I see there's a way back behind here. I think maybe right here. You see, there's I'm gonna put the AI like right here, and I'm gonna tell them to go. Just, the goal is going to be going straight to that. And let's see, just for the default path, so we can get a sense of what the default pathing is. They kind of go right here, and they get shot. Okay. So, this is going to take a few trials, I'm, I'm sure. And that's okay. So what, what tools are we going to need for this? Well, first, let's see. I'm going to need my teleporting ability. No. Is that not what it's called? Well, let's go ahead and just... Alright, player set, pause, pause. Let's go ahead and do that. Now I can kind of teleport around. I'm going to teleport back behind here. Or is it here? Okay. A couple things we're going to need. One, I already got a few things out of the way for right now. And... That is, I have a variable here, 
that I want to save all this information to and export it in a different local file, right? Okay. So every time the script gets called, it will pull information. I have what I want to store, and we'll get more into that later. So there's information I want to store. I have a way to store the information. And I am thinking, well, I thought I need to create a custom kind of AI grid, a way for me to kind of understand what's going on. And I'm not even sure if this is required. This uh, Creating this grid it may not even be required, but I'll show you what it does. It's just me kind of trying to think ahead. So we'll go ahead and run it now. And I'll run the visualizer for it as well so you we can visually see it. So I created this system that literally just throws down a grid that the AI will see. You can see all these little arrows. Kind of, we can see here, much easier. But this allows me to kind of track some more interesting information about an area. And I might not even need it, now that I think about it. Uh, so we'll try to not use it, because it is a pretty demanding thing already to run, because it kind of goes through and generates arrows you know, within whatever distance you specify. Right now I have 100 meters total. It kind of goes through and generates arrows. And actually I see the little weird issue right here. Look at that. Alright, anyway. So, I thought maybe I'll need something to kind of lay a grid, so I can kind of tell them, you know, kind of grids to go, how to generate movement paths. And, yeah, I, we'll see if we need that. We will see if we need that. I'm sure great. So, what's the next part? Well, the next part is literally the movement. So, I need the AI. All, I, all I'm doing them is giving AI a goal and telling this function essentially which AI I want it to go. I want it to take some information and decide how to move without me having to give it waypoints and to keep trying different different waypoints. And at first it's going to be really just insanely random and all over the place and so we, we need to create a system that resets everything and um, kind of retrains them. So what I'm thinking is as I'm talking about this out loud, I create a system that's for when someone gets killed. I want it to activate and run something. Well, what I want it to do, what I'm actually thinking instead, is every time an AI gets hit, I'm going to make the AI invincible, um, which is fine. I'm going to have him, every time he gets hit, it's just like a tag. He, gets, he has to get reset. And that way I can have it run a lot more reliably. I don't have to deal with respawning AI or anything. I think that's, or should I? I think the hit makes more sense. Let's let's do that. Let's do hit. So we're gonna change this. We can use a lot of the same functionality. Okay. We're gonna do hit. And now that much gets changed, but we have the unit that gets hit. Right? Here's the unit. We have the cause by and the damage and instigator. So let's do if we need the damage, if we want to get really kind of technical with it later, but keep in mind, we're doing basic stuff here. We don't want to, this is my first time ever kind of doing anything like this, so I need it to be relatively simple. So all I'm going to do is just kind of store. We're going to change this to, instead of death points, we're going to change it to uh, worn points. Okay. Alright, so what I did there is just change the event handler that lets us know, kind of updates this whole thing right here. This event handler we're going to add to the AI. It will literally just let us know, hey, you got hit, you need to be reset. And then we need to have a reset position that I need to define really quick. So, um, let's see if I can get creative. This is, ah, it's too big. Nah. Nope. Uh-huh. And these are really just too much, aren't they? Oh, that's fancy. Let's just use the good old grave dirt. This is where the AI is going to respawn. So we're going to use this point as gen respawn. Also restart. Equals cursor object. And just make sure I got it. Hint string gen restart. Okay. Let's gen underscore restart. And then we'll do 
Unit, set pause, get pause, gen underscore restart. And then before I add on things to here to reset it later. And then let's change this to uh, oop, LA hit. Okay. So what do we need to do here? Well, first, we need to tell the AI to move. And I'm thinking, okay, so, well, when you tell them to move to a point, the only one, huh, so I just got distracted by this. This looks like a very tiny door. What is this? What, what is this? It looks like a little tiny door. It's just a little tiny door. A little tiny door on the side of this building. That's, okay. Anyways, I'm sure it's something really... <laughs> okay. Anyway, so we want them to move in small increments. Try to make good decisions of where to go. So what I'm thinking is... We have it go first. Let's go ahead and get the goal position. Alright, so we're gonna need, we know we need to find what variables that we have the AI's gonna have to play with. So we need to give them some kind of input, right? Some kind of ability to make decisions. And so we need the goal position. And we also need to know all the worn positions. So where are all the positions that the AI has gone to before that has not worked out? And that's going to be these ally worn positions here. Okay. So just literally just gonna be ally warm positions this equals this. And I a lot of people I don't have to really do this where I define this as this array, but in this moment I don't wanna I wanna be careful of editing this at all and making any silly mistake like that. This makes it easier for me. The goal in this is not to be fully optimized uh, but to kind of just get something that works, right? Make sure this is yep. okay. We don't want to save the data too much. All right, so we have these worn points here. That's good. So I guess the first thing is we just need to move. So I'm actually going to take some code just to speed this up from dissension here, and I'm going to use waypoints. I think waypoints are fair. Uh, they were a little bit more visible for us to see instead of using the do move command or anything like that. We're going to go ahead and... Mm -hmm. uh, what is it? I think this recruits... Let's see, this recruit... When I recruit units here in Dissension, I create waypoints. Alright. There we go. And I'm going to clean this up and implement it. And bring everything in one file for this, so it's pretty easy for us to kind of see what's going on. And I should probably like full screen this so it's easier for you guys to see. Huh? That might make sense. So, and we also need, I guess, the group is group AI. Okay. So remember, we need to define variables the AI will can use here. And so this is, in my mind, yeah, you have to set up everything for the AI first. I wish I could just put it down and go, okay, learn automatically, but I, you have to kind of set up some structure for it from, I think, what you can do in Arma and set up some basic guidelines that it can do. You still have to kind of program the brain, if that makes sense, is it? But then you expect it to make the connections automatically, or make it almost like it look like it's making the connections, but it just knows what doesn't doesn't work. So there's gonna be two different things on a run. Okay, we want to do. And each run that the AI does is gonna have a score, and we're gonna get into that. So the closer the AI gets to the trophy, the better the score. Okay, without getting hit. So that's where it's going to get a little little messy. So we're going to use that score. The higher the score, and we'll do it on a scale of, uh, geez, I don't even know. We'll just do distance-wise. The smallest the distance, the better, right? But we also want to avoid areas where it's getting shot. So it would make more sense for most AI. Yeah, let's just move right up the center here. But we want it to go, well, I know there's a lot of bad things right here. 
let's uh, find other movement paths. Okay, so what we're going to do is... Let's see, um, there's going to be a lot of thinking in this because I haven't done anything like this before. So we're going to have it... Um, we need to have essentially a loop. And we're going to have a variable set on this AI. AI set variable uh, gen loop begin. Let's see, uh, a run attempt. It's true. Okay. And then this will let us know that he's actually actively trying to still run around and do his thing. And then when he gets hit, it simply sets it back to false and ends the run. And then we can run it, some data, crunch some numbers, do everything we need to do. So we're going to use a wait until for this, just because I think we don't need to have a, a while loop running here. But we're going to have things looping in here. Uh, multiple things looping in here. And wait until they tend to be more effect or optimized, I should say. They only check once per frame. And we're going to wait until the AI get variable gen run attempt. Run attempt is false. So we're going to wait for that not to be true, right? And that's when the whole thing, this part will end. But first, and this might get too complicated, we might change this up later, but so we're setting up a loop because we need something to constantly monitor his movement, right? Tell the AI kind of how to move. Well, how do we, so we have an AI here. How is he going to be told to move around? So he's going to go, okay, well, we're going to go ahead and and we're probably going to need another command here. I need a distance command. Um, there's another script I'm just going to rip off of here to just kind of speed things up. I'm probably going to need this eventually. I'm just opening up some scripts I think I'm going to need to use his fragment move. Okay, relative position is exactly what I'm thinking. Uh, yeah, I want to set it up just in a way that I give everything it needs. <coughs> Excuse me. Alright, so... Let's see... We'll do, yeah, we'll just do... Uh, new. Yeah, this new position is going to be the position of the unit. So we get pause AI. And we'll have it... Um, We'll just keep it simple for now, because you can even do things like have it learn what move distances are better. You can have it do you know one, you have it pick it for itself, and then I kind of have some weighted uh, sizes. But you know we're just going to have it move in 10 meter increments to keep it short and sweet right now. And we're going to go there. And the direction, uh, well the direction. That's interesting. Okay, so we're just going to have it, the uh, direction be towards the... always going towards the trophy. But maybe not always. So this is where it's going to get real real tricky here. Oh man, this is going to take some time. I can already tell. So there is this thing in here. I use direction. Yeah, I always forget this is a new way to use this direction command. Alright. Direction is going to be the AI get direction of the goal. All right. All right. So we're going to generate a new position of where he wants to go to. Okay. And then he's going to check this position and go, well, um, and we need, uh, so you can go, is, what's the, are there any warning zones here? So he's going to just pick a random direction. So usually generally towards that. He's going to go, are there any warning zones here? And that's when this is going to pop in. We need to make this, I'm just going to copy and paste this. It's just 
picks from an entire array, finds the closest position. And those arm already has kind of one built in, but this one I like a little bit better. It's a little bit more flexible. It's my own. I know how to work with it a little bit better. So we're going to go ahead and create a new function here called gen uh, closest. Closest. There we are. And copy and paste that, and it's already good to go. Alright. So what I want to do is closest danger. It's going to be literally the warning positions and then the new position here. And the order is going to be true for, I think true was closest first. And we'll just call this um, move check. Okay. We're only going to do this if uh, the warning positions, if the count of warning positions is greater than zero. Because it's going to throw out an error if we run it, run it right now. And we'll go ahead and private. We'll do. Uh, So, if the closest danger spot, so if it does find a spot that's too close to the new position, and we'll say, we'll say uh, 25 meters maybe, is less than, so if it's 25 meters, then we need to tell it to find a new position. So if, let's see, so if a, uh, if a position is considered dangerous, let us move around. So this is going to allow us to create the illusion of the AI's learning. He's really not. It's just we're going to keep building a list of dangerous zones for this one scenario that they're going to be able to constantly move around. Um, now you can see in the future how you can get more complex environments built up. You know where there's cooldowns on these kind of zones or there's they track more where enemy movement is and they remember it longer kind of thing uh, or they you know maybe they see a lot of players in an area it's a high density so maybe they decide to I don't know artillery that area you can get more complex with it for sure but we're gonna remember keep this simple I just want to get the basics down all right so if the then we need to find a new spot so we don't want to move to it yet we want to find a new spot so what does it do? Well, we want it to move, and we I just made me think of a new variable we might need to track. Okay. That's going to be learning AI safe points. So points that they really moved to before really didn't get shot in the face. So, so what we're going to do is add another variable here and I'm kind of winging this and I might completely change this or come back to it next video and be like oh yeah I really yeah I really don't know about that wait what how did that just change all that okay this, this is so weird sometimes we have save points okay All right. Okay. So now with the save points idea, I need to change already. I need to change this up. So I'm thinking, uh, this stuff isn't bad here. That's not bad at all. Um, but we want them to check for save points first. So if count save points is greater than zero. Less than one, uh, greater than zero, then else. So what this is saying is, if, the, if there are no known save points, then we're going to run some different code 
But there's not any known save points, so we're just going to try moving towards the direction first and just see what happens. Okay. Let's just see what happens. That makes sense. You know, let's just run towards the, the objective here and see what happens. Well, if there is a known save point, then we want him to maybe go to that save point first. So we'll keep it simple. So then uh, for each save point, well, let's see. We're going to get that in a second here. Because we know first he's not going to generate. We're, let's do this logically because now I'm getting ahead of myself. So we know that he's going to go ahead and run towards, you know, the. And he might be safe for 10 meters. I'm not even sure. Now he's running a shot instantly. He's going to run towards it. And then if he lives, then it's going to be a safe point, right? So how do we track a safe point? So he's going to move towards it. We're going to wait. Uh huh. So he's going to check if there's any danger zones. No danger zones, so... You know, if there is a danger zone, then we need something else, right? But if not, we just need to set a waypoint. So let's go ahead and get that waypoint set up. So then he's going to add a waypoint to the new position. And this is going to cause an error here, the way we have this set up. So we are going to go ahead and just move this out here. And we're going to do private. Oh, let's do that. Actually, let's do that in here. And private, new direction. Or let's see, was it new position? And I'm just doing a private up here so I can set the variable for locality sake. Or scope sake, sorry. Let's make sure this is fine. Okay. Then it adds it, and then we're going to do move, and we're going to do save. Oh, wait, that's normal, and then, haha, got it. I want to see. Save. Save. Okay. Alright, move to get safe. We want to do then have it sleep for five seconds. If. And this is going to be a little slow from the beginning, and that's fine. It's only five seconds. If the AI is still running the attempt, right? Because remember, when he gets hit, it resets the whole event. It resets him. But if he gets there for five seconds, and we have to do a check here once he gets there, but if he's there for five seconds, then what we can do is mark that as a safe point. Save point, push back to get pause. Well, let's just do new position, right? Because that position is safe. Now we now we got more data here. Now we has more information to work with. That position's safe. But now we need another wait until uh, here. And we need to do a constant check. Wait until, all right, the, uh, let's see, wait until AI distance 2D, new position is less than, we'll say three, we'll do less than four, or I think that should work just fine. Okay. So let's go through this and so we'll get to the bottom and then if this isn't true then it'll come back up to the top and restart the whole thing. So what if there is a save point? Now we have a save point. Well, what we want to do is it's a very similar thing. We want to generate a position generally going towards the direction of the goal, right? In 10 meter increments. We want to check to see if there are any safe points already near that, right? So we want to go here. 
And we want to go ahead and the safe points are actually going to no, they're not going to change during this loop, really. Well, let's make it so that it does update appropriately. We'll do it for the one positions, too, in case multiple AI are running this, right? Okay. So we have the safe position. And where are we at here? Oh, we're at 30 minutes in time. So I'm going to go ahead and finish this last line of code, and we're going to end there. And I'll continue this in a second video. So let's go ahead and... So what we want to do is it pulls the safe positions this time and it's pulling, look at the new position, okay, and it's going, okay, we're going to take a look, what's the closest safe pause, alright so if the closest safe pause distance 2D from the new position is less than, uh, we'll say 5 then well, let's actually do less than uh, four, right? Then we want him to pick that position to move to. Then new position equals safe as possible. So that will pick an already known safe position. And we'll actually increase that to five, less than five. And then it'll move to that position next, right? Uh, actually, let's let's less than let's do less than tw let's see less than fifteen. The reason why I'm doing this is I need to make it and it's uh, it is greater than ten meters away already, right? We don't just bounce them back and forth in the same position. So safe pause distance two D is greater than. Our oh, distance today of the AI is greater than five meters, right? Then that's the new position. Okay. But if it's not, we need to go ahead and just kind of generate a new position. And in towards the direction, and we might have to change it up to make it kind of random direction that it moves in. But I think you get the idea. And it kind of moves in towards the direction of there. Just find a new spot. Okay. And then now what do we do if it finds a dangerous spot? Alright, that'll be for the next video. So everyone, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.